Hello and thank you for joining the midweek edition of Journalist Hangouts. I'm Ayodili Uzubakum. It's about nine days to the conduct of the 2023 general election. So how ready are you to vote in the elections? Today on the program, Supreme Court extends earlier order against CBN's February 10 deadline to February 22nd as riots and protests break out in Wari, Benin, Ibadan and Akure over Naira scarcity. And later on the show, we'll take a look at how the election will be fought and won in Kwara, Oyo and Enugu states on the pundit segment of the program. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju and Olabisi Deji Folutile. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. With about nine days to the conduct of the 2023 general election, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has warned that the cashless and currency swap policies of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, are constituting a major challenge to the polls. The commission warned that if nothing is done to address the cash crunch caused by the policies, it will be difficult to deploy staff and materials for the election. Judy? Before that, we know that um, conducting an election and even military operation, ordinarily, if you are posting um, police to a uh, location on off-season election or deploy detachment of military, and even INEC for their ad hoc staff and those people they will be deploying on the field that day, that most of them, it's a transaction that is conducted through cash. Yes, uh, as I've said before, um, MFLA is trying to criminalize holding cash in our country. And our country has not reached that point. The National Security Advisor talked about the danger that even this policy constitutes to um, our war against terror in the Northeast and uh, other parts of Northern Nigeria. There are many places where there is no form of broadband presence. There are communities where Boko Haram has destroyed base stations. So there is nothing like you are able to use your phone, yet we are moving everybody. We are trying to turn everybody to um, users of uh, digital uh, payment uh, platforms and all that. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. We have, for example, the Gawa state, only 18% of the women actually have bank accounts. Mm -hmm. The rest of them, are they not human beings? Do they not deserve to be able to um, use their money that they had worked hard for? I mean, so this is the thing. I knew the moment the INEC chairman complained to Emefile, and Emefile said, look, we are going to address the problem. We are going to bring the money that INEC needs. I knew that for these guys, it's, it's a problem. It's bus drivers that help them to convey uh, material, material on the election day. Mm -hmm. It's not as if INEC has its own vehicles That's and all, all that. That's you all. know? Now, we are even confronted with a situation in which for people who want to buy fuel, they tell you, no, go and bring cash, uh, new notes. People who are desperately looking for new notes, they are trying to force fellow Nigerians to bring out the new notes that are not readily available. Last night when I was going home, I found so many people at a bus stop where normally you find dozens of uh, bike riders. It's because everyone uh, was not sure that these bike riders will take uh, the old notes from them because some were already rejecting it. So how do they then go home? There's no reason to put our election in jeopardy or um, take actions that would impair or, or endanger the successful conduct of our election because we wanted to change the color of currencies. Because it's not redesigning. It's actually repainting that has been done. And it's horrible when you look at even the old currency you compare to this one. Quality, the difference in terms of quality is like night and day. Mm -hmm. Extremely atrocious, the poor quality of mm -hmm. currency. Just hold the 1,000 naira note for some time. Hold it in your hand just like this for some time. 
and by the time you open, if 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 your your palm is a little moisty, mm. check what the currency looks like after all. Absolutely poorly printed and and, and Substance. not even pleasing on the eye in any way. And that's what we are holding and boasting about and subjecting people to needless agony. I mean, it, now that INEC is complaining, we want to see whether the CBN will not try to solve this problem. If they do not solve this problem substantially, then it means that their agenda is to ensure that we do not have elections in our country. This, um, this problem is like self-inflicted. In the newly, in, in the 2022 Electoral Act, it was said that, you know, the amount INEC is going to spend, money they are going to spend for any election must have been released a year before, mm -hmm. one clear year before the election. Now, let's say they've gotten the approval, but we're talking about physical cash now. And this will definitely hamper them from sorting out their vendors. Uh, I, I think um, we have to be very careful not to allow any policy to be a source of um, extending our electoral process mm. or the general elections. A lot of people have expressed their worry about whether this election is going to hold or not. And that has even prompted the INEC chairman to come out to say that they are ready for that, for this election. But what we are saying now, and from what uh, INEC is saying, I think um, for Nigerians that are discerning, it's like a warning signal. That's the way I, I look at it. Because INEC is saying we are ready with every other thing. But this is the only problem we are having. And if we continue to have this problem, then we may not be able to conduct this election because we need this money before we can do this. Because we need the money for logistics, we need the money for uh, administration, for security purposes and all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, is this self-inflicting YES in capital? Yes. So the, what is happening now is supporting the uh, belief of those who think that the general elections are not meant to hold. You know, some people have that belief that uh, we are working towards having a, a, an interim government and all of it's that. It's not in our constitution. That which is not even in our constitution. Yes, but some people are saying, they, they are, are saying, saying that. Their, yeah. their and um, if what I'm trying to say in essence is that we should not play into the hands <coughs> of anyone. Because if this, current, if this cash crunch is not addressed, it is as good as saying that, okay, we don't have money, therefore, we cannot hold this election. Well, the CBN governor said it will provide money that the INEC needs. But we also know that uh, all this while, in the last uh, two or three weeks, We've also been told that Nigerians will have access to new notes and all of that, and uh, people still don't have that access. So we cannot really say what the CBA, we cannot go mm. to town with can't what take is, him by his we words. can't take, yes, that is what I'm saying. So we, it's, it's really a serious issue. It's a serious issue, and uh, we need to address it because there shouldn't be any reason whatsoever for this election that we've all been waiting for, not to hold at the end of the day. Mm. Okay. It is still far from over regarding the litigation against the Naira redesign policy of the federal government. The Supreme Court has adjourned the suit filed by some state governments, governments challenging the Naira redesign policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. The Apex Court adjourned the case till Wednesday, February 22nd for hearing of the consolidated suits by 10 states. Meanwhile, protests have continued across the country while 
where residents in Wari, Benin City, Ibadan, and Akure took to the streets to protest Naira shortage. Let's share some viral videos of the protests in Ibadan and Benin with you. Petrol on Tundas lay. I want to petrol and I will look at that. Baby, you took my back and I looked. And you shall do it. Baby, you took my back and I Life at Union Bank. Udu Road. Udu Road. <coughs> Officially, Babajide, this policy has plunged 
the Federal Republic of Nigeria into crisis. Yes, and uh, the, the possibility of this expanding is or, there. Or escalating. You know? uh, uh, the, the same thing that we are saying. If now that um, we've had it in Ogun State, we've had it in Akure, they are coming nearer to Lagos. The governor of Lagos State must do the needful. Because if our he has come to out. enforce the decision of the Supreme Court, we've seen other governors lock up business premises where they are rejecting the Naira. No individual, a mere failure, ten, 10 of a mere failure do not equate to even a judge of the Supreme Court. They have to respect the judgment of the Supreme Court that says that the Naira, old Naira notes, can be used at this Simply time. Because like that. is that frustration that is causing people to take have to the street, to the new one, they have causing to people the to start uh, attacking the the banks one. and all that. Yes. He has to do that. Because if tension controls to build up in Lagos, and we have riots in Lagos. We cannot continue. What we are seeing in other places will be a child's play. Yes. So those banks, so Wolu has to have a meeting with those uh, the bank MDs and to the rest of them. This. Take those Naira notes from people. That's what the Supreme Court says. Till 22nd. Take the Naira notes from people. People cannot stand the possibility of losing their hand and money. It can push some people to suicide, it can push people to violence. So that is the minimum that these business premises can, 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 can do, at least to help calm things down. No one has the right to reject the Nigerian currency mm. until it is officially no longer legal tender. And as we speak, the old Naira notes remain legal tender. The Supreme Court affirmed that. In fact, Justice uh, um, Okoro reminded... Um, um, Kano Agabi, the lawyer of the federal government, that remember the order that we gave. And he cited a case saying that if you come before a court, once you agree to come before a court, you are duty bound to wait until the matter is decided. Mm. So the, the federal government and the CBN have no right under the law to come and say that, no, that deadline has expired. When the Supreme Court was yet to even hear the matter. Where's the place of this argument? That immediately, that, immediately said that, Kano Agabi replied that, yes, you are right. And the judge went on to say, tell your client to let the people have money. If they go to the ATM, the plaintiffs will not come and withdraw the, uh, will come and withdraw the case. Make money available to the poor masses. You should know that a hungry man is an angry man. I won't say more than this. This was what Justice um, uh, Okoro, who is the head of the seven-man panel, said to Kano Agabi, the lawyer of the federal government and, and CBN, to remind them that, look, we are all facing this problem. Now the judges know that people are suffering. The judges know that. Mm -hmm. By saying this, Justice Okoro has said, yes, indirectly, that, look, the suffering of the people has got to us. Tell your clients to make money available to Nigerians mm -hmm. so that... This crisis can end. Then when Kano Agabi was quoted as saying, oh, um, people are trying to blame the federal government and the attorney general uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the poverty in the land, that poverty has been there, trying to give the impression that this is not what caused it. Of course, he's a lawyer. He will try to claim that he does not know that this is the pain that we are solving. But in another breath, I heard him saying, we are trying to solve this problem. I don't know he knows what to do. Why they are always trying to twist things. And that's the nature of lawyers. Big. That's the nature of lawyers. The lawyers are order. trained to tell us that what we are, you are wearing is actually white, not black. Your suit. They are trained according as they are paid. That's how a learned, I mean, a, a brilliant uh, essayist and writer described them. That according as they are paid, they are trained to tell us that black is white and white is black. But let's even leave that. The suffering of the Nigerian people has to be addressed. And government must behave responsibly. My own advice to governors, and I trust that the governor of Kaduna State is already good at doing that. Any business premises 
that wants this pain that Nigerians are suffering to, to, to get worse, that refuses to obey the, the, the order of the Supreme Court and refuses to take the old Naira notes, they should go and lock up those business premises. And I know that mm -hmm. Nancy Hero even has this attitude of demolishing uh, uh, buildings. So I, I know that at this time, he is supercharged to go and demolish. Whether you are a bank or not, you are under the law. So there is no reason to disobey uh, the, the Supreme Court. Some people will say, never again must we have a situation like this, that till they start creating, um, um, claiming casualties, till we start seeing, our president is always aloof. And these visuals will go viral, it will be all over the place. The normal sit down, look, laid back attitude. Mm. The seven days is passed now. People will start killing. Things will start happening. We are seeing it now. Still, yeah, I, I, they think I, this policy can sail through. I, I was just listening to Baba Jide and um, the advice that is given to the governor of Lagos State. And I'm like, we are in a very, very confused uh, situation. And um, things can only get worse mm. if we don't nip it down. Nip it. It's already bad. Mm. And for me, it goes even beyond what a governor says or decides to do. I think this problem was created by the federal government and the Central Bank of Nigeria. Right? And uh, the solution can only come through those two arms, uh, through the FG and the CBA. Because let me, let me just give you this scenario. If you ask banks to take old notes, if the governors tell banks to take old notes, do you think they are going to, believe, they, they are going to obey the governors? They report to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Just one person, Mr. President, that's exactly. the missing key. Missing so key. they report to the Central Bank of Nigeria, and without any official directive from the Central Bank of Nigeria, these banks are not going to do anything. You can see what happened. Even in Lagos, the courts rejected old notes, despite the ruling of the Supreme Court. You see, this kind of confusion in a government that is the ruling party it's making mm, everybody to so mm. be confused and uh, it's, shameful. it's shameful. honestly. It's shameful it's because shameful. we are seeing a, a, a ruling party that is at war mm. within itself. Mm. So you now and you now subject other and the, the people who are supporting mm. is uh, is uh, is clearly anti people uh, 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 policy. They are they are the people from the rival party. So you, you, see you now, now see that yes, see the, the opposition... Of, uh, the hypocrisy in the... Yeah. In the yes, opposition, what we see in this whole thing. People have Imagine lost, even the, uh, the uh, Edo governor and mm. Bayesa governor have decided to join the FG. So in, to, to, to join the FG against the yes. other 10 governors that went to court about this... Meanwhile, court. Uh, Edo, there, Meanwhile. there are people are rioting. So you see that uh, this thing is purely political. And when two elephants are fighting, you now see that the grass becomes the, the victim, which is what is happening in Nigeria now. Look, no, I the, my own biggest concern is that it's the masses who are suffering. Yeah. Somebody was telling me, he said, okay, you are thinking that banks won't give politicians money. The bulk of the money in the banks, who holds them? Politicians. Is it not politicians? Politicians are the people who can loot at the level of billions. Yes, Now they keep in the banks. Look at what usually happens when a new government comes in. You see banks will start uh, going after them. If people, they just won National Assembly elections, banks will descend on them. Oh, we want you to uh, patronize our bank. Mm -hmm. That is what they do. So it's because they know that these people always have funds. So is it that politician who will now need uh, uh, money? In fact, somebody was telling me that a politician has the capacity to even know how much was supplied the bank. They do. They do. They and say, they okay, do know. Okay. Hello, love for me. Yeah. How much are you going to give me? I know that you received also amount of new notes yesterday. How much are you going to give me? They will negotiate. And then the politician. As a matter of fact, even CBN governor said said it yesterday. 
that uh, politicians are the one collecting he the has money. not supplied enough he should that he is should the provide problem. proof that he is should the provide problem. proof that he, you see if this country were a country where public officers Mm. You know, respect the people and are accountable to the people. Mm. He will tell we'll us how much he has printed. He, they will be briefing us that on a daily basis, this, this is how much and, and we are pushing. This is how much we are yeah, pushing. This is how much we are pushing and to even the, the banks they are unable to do that. Mm. For the distribution, they should be held responsible for how they have been distributing the money because obviously. This money is not being supplied. The it's new not notes, been, yes. They are not being supplied. Look at there was a bank that they accused of uh, receiving 200 and something uh, million mm -hmm. that, that they didn't distribute it. Mm. Uh, ICPC rushed to the place. See their defense. They said, we have distributed this, uh, this money. What we had, that place that you went to is a regional yeah. headquarters they, from they, where we funnel the monies to other oh, places. Yeah. That This is our record. See what we have distributed. Uh, over the uh, and you know, know, just not one listen to that. Out. Anyway, no. that is their problem. Get but the truth, the truth is, the truth, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what did they do? Let mm -hmm. the ICPC file charges against those people now. That is why sometimes all, the, all those uh, the anti-corruption bodies they are unable to make headway because you just you do some of these things just for the cameras to come mm -hmm. and just, those guys provided they even said okay that you can you can check with cbn get that kind of you can check with is, cbn yeah, to see how, uh, how so we've been distributing money. this thing yeah. that's no way a branch will have uh, no mm -hmm. about of course we now it's our duty to look for the truth and this is what happened at the end of the day the whole nonsense but just, just a, fizzled out because it was a storm in a teacup you know Making a mountain out of a molehill. The reality is that they are not supplying enough. We have, you know what they are even doing? Somebody in the banks told me that it's so bad now that they will call uh, the CBN to say, we don't have enough. Nobody will pick their calls. Wow. Ideally, Emir Fele should be addressing us every yes. day. Yeah. That gentlemen uh, and women of our country, this is how much we pushed out today. This is mm. how, what we have printed. No the totality of what we have printed. Mm. Because they are not accountable. Mm. They know that the truth is that they do not have enough. Yeah. Let them prove to us. I challenge them to prove that they, they, they have enough and that they have supplied enough. They are not accountable to, they are not accountable to anybody. The problem and the system, the system so allows them to get away with mm. not being Nigerians accountable. Nigerians have never been at the centerpiece of our policies. And that is what is obvious now. When you want to take a decision, you look at the impact, the implication for the people on the people. Definitely in this particular case, that was not done. No. And that has they never just rushed been done. to do it because, yes. you know, when people are driven by emotions, impotent emotions, Oh, we are targeting individuals. This is what we want to do. Mm. At the end of the day, you are not the, 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 you will not use, you use your intuition instead of your brain. You will not think deep mm. because you are already focused on what you think this you want to achieve. You, want to achieve. you are not looking at, or that you are fixated. Yeah. You are not looking at mm. what could happen. And I've said it, okay, they talk about, oh, That's India scenario. did it. Okay, when India did it, what happened? Nigerians should ask questions, what happened? For two years, the Indians didn't recover from it. The economy suffered. It, and it was the poor people that largely suffered in That's India. Even when they were claiming that, oh, we wanted to address counterfeiting, they found only very few counterfeit notes. Somebody spoke and they withdrew, they withdrew money valued in excess of 286 billion. Somebody spoke about Sweden's uh, cashless policy, that they are the best in the world and everything, but still... They still have enough cash in this country. People, yes. Uh, it's really they are still spending cash. Our, our, spending our, cash is not a crime now. It's cash. not a crime. There's, not no, there's no society that is cashless. cashless mm -hmm. you, when they talk about cashless, there's no society that is cashless. They praise South Korea for the progress that they made uh, in terms of the cashless economy. What did they do in South Korea? They created incentives for business owners. So that when you come in, you bring this, this is what you get. Those ones in turn now became champions of the cashless economy, reaching out to their own patrons to say, okay, gentlemen, this is what you will do. This is what we'll do for you if you do this, if you do that. You it's not, you, you don't, don't, legis you don't no, legislate you don't by force. You don't implement cashless That's policy do. overnight. There are a lot of things ah. that go with the cashless. Uh, yes, involved, yes, exactly. So it's involved. not just about uh, you transferring money. For example, mm. what problem have you been noticing? The bank apps, they broke down. A lot of because a lot more people yes. are now going they there. Said in January, Meanwhile, the 125 million percent increase. It has never happened.
mm. in January alone, because mm. a lot of people are doing that. Meanwhile, the infrastructures are to there. Support it, it's not there. there. It's not there. So mm. it's not just something that you just go in overnight. No, it has to be properly it planned. It has to be uh, yeah. properly planned. It's How obvious that this particular, this particular policy is not about the people. Is is political? Yes. And every and day is it's getting, getting clearer and clearer worse. that you know this it's is getting worse. A political. Nobody knows what will happen policy. next. Okay. Tomorrow when we wake up, we don't know what will happen Unless next. It. Like where they had these riots now. Even I'm sure that um, uh, the governor of Edo State who joined them in, in promoting something that has already failed. He did not know that his his, his own uh, state will be uh, on fire. If you hear what they were singing about him. The derisive songs that they were singing about their governor. If if, if you listen to them, will be ashamed. Now you join them. What what have you gained? That oh, you support this something that is bringing misery, we'll, so much we'll pain like on your people. You support everything. it by saying that you are inciting your people. Mm. All right, we we'll take this breather. When we come back, we we'll talk more. Thank you for staying with us. Yes, we are counting down to the twenty twenty three general election on the pundit corner today, where we dissect how the 2023 election will be won and fought. So on our corner today, we are beaming our searchlight on Kwara State in, not, in the North Central, Jiri, Kwara State. What is the voting pattern of the people of this state? Well, the Kwara politics was dominated uh, for a long time by the PDP, first by the APP, Later, by the... In 1999. Uh, yeah, APP was the first produced governor. And later, um, PD, uh, PDP, uh, when Saraki became governor. And then, today, APC successfully kicked the PDP out of power uh, through the Otoge Revolution. In 2015. Of uh, 2015. I, uh, uh, and of uh, 2019, and uh, today we have an APC governor in power. The interesting thing, we'll start with the um, governorship race. The interesting thing is that four out of the five major candidates are from uh, Kwara Central, that is Iloni. And uh, in Kwara Central, most of the votes are in Iloni West, where the governor and Bukola Saraki uh, uh, are from. And we also have Bolaji Abdullah Sosro from there. Okay. Now, interestingly, I was talking about the candidates of those parties, uh, NNPP, APC, SDP, YPP. Uh, SDP and this is the son of the uh, former governor, uh, Lawa. You know, and we have uh, Professor, um, Professor Abdul Karim Oba. He's also the NNPP candidate after he lost the SDP primaries two times. So in Kwara, the governor has a tough job because the PDP candidate is from Kwara North. Bukola Sarapki has played this card before, um, opting for power shifts, which in his view will sideline, um, I mean, will ensure that bulk votes can come from that part of the State that had been longing to produce a governor. He did it when he brought um, Fatai, because Kwara South had not produced governor, you know. Uh, and, Fatai and, and, yes, and successful, they were successful, he defeated the candidate of his father, and um, Fatai of became the governor. Now, in this case, he's gone to Kwara North, which had been clamoring to produce the. To pick the a candidate? Yes. So they are expecting that there will be. Um, there will be both votes from there. But the, the candidate is, um, is a no pay person, and there are two local governments, Edu and Patigi, are the local governments of, I mean, uh, uh, that the people are uh, no pay people. But the issue is the governor has done so much work in Kwara North, and the governor expects that he will be able to get a lot of their votes. So the, chunk, the quantum of votes that the PDP is expecting from that part of the state mm. may not come. Mm. They will get votes from um, Patrick and Edu, but from Barutin, 
Kayama and uh, Moro local government, the vote will be diluted. So to simply pick a candidate from the north would not necessarily guarantee uh, mm -hmm. victory. They have to score significant votes from that part of the state and still score good enough votes from the learning, I mean, from Kwara Central, Central and Kwara East. South. So mm. Talking about uh, um, of, uh, and the rest of them, Kwara South. So the people contesting against the governor today were people who contested against him for the primaries of the APC back in 2019. So they were all in one party. Yes, before. and the, 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 the particular party was very rancorous. Mm. But they have now found themselves in different parties. So what will happen is that in Iloni South, the governor, because he's doing some work in Iloni, the governor will be able to win only narrowly. Mm. Only narrowly. Mm. The governor's best bet is Kwara South. We are there. He, yes, he has some significant um, uh, support there. But if you can do very well in Kwara South and get significant votes from Kwara North because of the work that he has done, because he has concentrated so much on Kwara North, their greatest problem is roads, and he's done roads. There is targeting votes from it's a there. It's very silent um, achiever. Yes. So now, if he can get significant votes from Kwara North, um, and definitely is going to win Kwara Central. And mm. that's where the bulk of the votes are. That's a big vote. Despite the fact that there are three other candidates from Kwara Central, and you expect that they will smash each other's mm. uh, uh, votes and all that. He's going to win Kwara Central. Once mm. he wins Kwara Central, I know that Kwara North will be quite close. Mm. But he's going to win Kwara South. Mm. So that will give him an advantage. In Kwara not many people really want, at this stage, the Saraki family to come back to power. They believe that if the PDP wins, the Saraki back mm. in, in power. You know? So that uh, could really help the governor, despite the fact that the governor has not been good at making up with uh, perceived uh, enemies. He's not, he's not done that well. And one thing that can also help him is the, if the APC wins at the national level, that the people of Kwara don't like doing opposition oh, politics. politics. So that will help him. Bandwagon effect, yes. Uh, that could after. give him a bounce. Hmm. You know, um, in 2019, they came up with Otoge. Yes. Then uh, at that time, the PDP came up with Otunya. So in 2023, the PDP came up with Osua. Hmm. Whereas the APC have come up with Marcelo. That's continue. So, in, uh, so politics. And so, <laughs> so, the governor will win Kwara, um, Kwara Central. Kwara South, we are the seven local governments. The governor will also win. In Kwara North, there are five local governments. He will struggle in two of those local governments. He should be able to win marginally or lose marginally in the remaining three. That should give him and edge over others and um, enable him to win the race. So I'm predicting that um, Governor, um, <coughs> that the Governor, Governor Abdurrahman will be re-elected. However tough it is, however close, I'm predicting the that governorship. he will be re-elected. In the president, for the presidency, Kwara South is Ashwaju all the way in Kwara South. He also has support in the in, um, in Kwara North, mm. and then Kwara Central. You know, is a big title holder in Kwara Central. So we expect him to do well there. And the interesting thing is that even those who are divided, those who are in different parties, mm. who left APC to go to, still prefer to work a, a lot of them are still even uh, disposed. Uh, yeah, disposed to working with him. You know, so Ashwa Jubala met Inumbu has an edge over other presidential candidates in, in Kwara State, and he is projected to win the Kwara State. Election. Yes. OK. Then, well, let's go to Oyo State, Southwest South Nigeria. Oyo is, um, is a very interesting um, uh, scenario. scenario. Hmm. The governor, the current governor, 
At the beginning, it didn't have the support of the mortgages in Ibadan. The mortgages are like the kings of the grassroots. In 2019, when he contested, he didn't get their support. But for the first time in his political life, he has the mortgages backing him. That is very significant. And the governor has been able to connect the five zones of the state to one another. You now have the um, uh, uh, projects going on, uh, in, especially in the Okeogun area. I have so many projects going on uh, in the Okeogun area. And every, uh, each of the 351 wards in the state is building um, uh, PACs, that's the uh, primary, uh, health, uh, primary centers. health centers. That is also of tremendous um, advantage uh, to the governor in what is supposed to be um, a tough race. Unfortunately for the APC, there are three factions. Mm. There is the faction of those who had been in the APC for long and opposed the emergence of Teslim Folani. These people are very, uh, they are close to Ashiwaju, they are Ashiwaju supporters, but they don't want to work for Teslim. There is a particular son, I don't want to mention his name, mm. I won't mention his mm. name, is one of such mm -hmm. people. They are traditional APC people. Mm -hmm. They will remain in the party. They are not leaving, but they will not work for the kind of their party. Then a court party. Mm -hmm. uh, is the kind of the court party. Mm -hmm. There are people who left the APC out with of him, annoyance. out of uh, anger to mm -hmm. join a court party. Mm -hmm. Those ones to have sympathy, they are working for Ashwajibola mm -hmm. uh, uh, in that, uh, that place. Mm -hmm. And there are also those who... Uh, not forgetting... Um, the former governor, Ladoja, is he still in accord? Ladoja, yes, he's, he's less active politically now. Okay. But he has, he's, he's given the governor his support. Okay. The governor has uh, Ladoja's uh, support. And right now, it is that division that the APC has. And the fact that, mm -hmm. the fact that Ladoja, I mean, um, um, Shei Makinde, is not supporting the candidate of his party. He's not openly supporting Atiku. Mm. With, that, with the governor not openly supporting you, to the point that the PDP didn't set up a PCC for your state. Yes. So whom do you pass resources towards? Mm. Who is coordinating the campaign in the state? That is a problem. And if you try to go through the normal channel, the formalized channel through the party, it may end up in Sheyima Kinde's hands. So they are now forced to try to go through people outside of the formal party mm, structure. Mm. And when you do that, mm. there is a problem because uh, it may not reach all of the places that it should reach. Because if you now pass it through Sheyi, you think that Sheyi may use it to work for the opposition. Mm. Where a governor openly refuses to support the kind of his party. Mm. That is... So let's look at the implication on the presidential election. That is where we are headed. That gives Ashwaju an edge. I've seen surveys saying that Ashwaju will lose on your state. Hmm. From all of these scenarios, I don't know how it will happen. Because even the leading candidates of the, the top parties in the race are supporting him. Hmm. Candidate of a court party, hmm. the governorship candidate is supporting him. We've seen um, uh, um, Mark Inde himself appearing to support him, but not openly supporting his own party. So that leaves uh, Atiku in a quandary. And don't also forget, as you are a Yoruba man, Oyo is the biggest uh, Yoruba state by landmass. So mm -hmm. the people are likely to see him as their son so and vote for him. So before Ashiwaju is projected to take Oyo state. Presidential and that will be significant because it's one of the biggest states. Mm -hmm. So talking about Enugu state, there is not so much to talk about in Enugu state. In the governorship election, as well as National Assembly elections, the people are inclined to vote PDP. The PDP has always won elections there. Mm. You know, it's a case of, okay, Unamani's boys. Yeah. Unamani left the scene and his boys have retained power, mm. even though one of them eventually abandoned him. That's mm. uh, Sullivan, Sullivan. Sullivan Chime. Yeah. But his boys have always retained power. The, the people are inclined to vote PDP. It's a mm. PDP state. They're inclined to vote PDP in the governorship election. and national assembly and state assembly election. Mm -hmm. But in the national election, that's the election. presidential election, it's a massive vote for Peter Obi. That is what I project. Liberal Peter, uh, 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 Peter Obi is a legal party. party. In yes. 
the, the second biggest spare part market in, uh, in the southeast is in Enugu State. It's called the coal camp. The day Peter Obi came to campaign, the market was short. It's unprecedented. The crowd, the acceptance is unprecedented. Wow. And Peter wow. Obi is projected hmm. to win the presidential, presidential election in Enugu State, State by a comfortable, by a hefty margin. So mm. this is what regardless we have. the fact that there's a city PDP machinery there. Yes, despite the, fact, despite the mm -hmm. fact that the governor of the state is one of the G5 governors, mm. is projected the sentiment of the people in Enugu State is to vote for Peter Obi, except things change tomorrow. But for now, if elections were conducted today, the, the presidential race will be won by Peter Obi of the Labour Party. Oh, thank you. Bikyo, we continue with this pundit segment tomorrow. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 p.m. Join us this Sunday for Journalist Hangout on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We are on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.